Open your Bible with me in Luke chapter 10. If you can go with me in your Bible, Luke chapter 10. And we are going to read it from the verse 25 to the verse 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 onward. It's a long passage, but I want to read it all for us to understand what, what God wants to speak with us today. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 25, it says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Just one minute before we continue reading. In life we always have people that wants to to get us or to try to, to manipulate us or to try to uh, say that we are not doing the right thing. So there, there was this expert in the law, this man, he was a doctor in the law, he knew the scriptures very well, and he was trying to test Jesus, he was trying to, to test uh, what he was doing, like, he, like, like with us, no, like many people try to say, hey, you are a Christian, but do you really Christian? What the Bible says, why you are not following what the Bible says, you know, like the stories, no? So this man was doing the same. He was trying to, to, to test Jesus and say, well, Jesus, you know very well, like you are, you are a rabbi. So what the scripture says, what, what, you, what do I need to do to, to inherit the, the eternal life? But Jesus, because Jesus knew his heart, Jesus said, well... What did the word say? So he was trying to impress Jesus in this moment. Say, I'm going to show that they know the Bible. You know, there are lots of people that say, I know the Bible. Yeah. The only problem, they don't act or they don't obey what the word says. Right. It's not just to know the Bible, but it's to obey, it's to fulfill, it's to, it's to make the, the Bible alive inside of us. So, so the man, he tried to impress Jesus and he said, well... You know, the, in the word it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and the, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus continues saying in verse 28, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. Do it. It's not just to you know it. Do it and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and the, who is my neighbor? Pay attention in the word here, it says, and he's, he, now he's trying to justify himself. We know what we have to do. But sometimes we keep it trying to justify ourselves, we say, mm, it's really this that I have to do, it's... It's really the right way to do it, how to do it. But in our heart, we really know what we have to do. But sometimes we just keep it trying to justify and justify and justify ourselves like this man. And he, he asked, how, how can I know? Who, who is my neighbor? I know about God. I know that I need to love God. And I'm really loving God. But who is my neighbor? Verse 30. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him out, uh, they stripped him off his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. Verse 33. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where, he, where the man was. 
And when he saw him, he took pity or compassion on him. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil, pouring on oil, on, on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Verse 36. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor? Robbers. The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So this is a story that he, uh, it's, Jesus just started or just tried to explain for this expert on the law who was the neighbor. But in this passage, it's, very, it's something that's, that's impressing me or it's important for us to know is the encounter that one man had with several people. Because Jesus started telling the story saying about one man that he was traveling. This man was just started traveling, you know, and he was coming down from Jerusalem and he was going to Jericho. The people that went with me to Israel, we could understand this little bit. Like we were in the middle of the desert and we saw Jericho on one side. I'm sorry, Jericho was in the right side and Jerusalem was in the left side. It was a long way to go. It was a long way to go and only desert, only desert. And it says that this man was traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So, and it, on the way, and the, when he started traveling, he had to, to face, or he had an encounter with the four different type of people. He had an encounter with the four kinds of people. And we need to discover who are we in this, like who, like these four encounters, or like these four kind of people, who we are, like. He, so let me explain this better for you. Let's go into in, in these four encounters that these men had. The first encounter it says in the verse thirty. In reply, Jesus said, "A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by robbers." Repeat with me, robbers. Again, robbers. Okay, the first encounter that this man, that the Bible doesn't mention any name, doesn't mention the name of the man, doesn't mention the name of the robber, doesn't mention the name of the other people that I'm going to say, but it says the specific kind of people. So it says that one encounter was the encounter with the robbers. So maybe you can say, no, 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 I am not a thief, I'm not a robber. Why are you saying this, pastor? I'm here in the church, I'm a good person, I am not a robber. But you need to understand what, what is the robber, what it really means. Okay, because when you say robbers, it's because the, the person is trying to steal, is, is robbing something. But let's understand the, the, what's inside of the heart of the robber. The robber, we can... We can uh, having the concept that he's a selfish, a selfish man or a selfish woman, depends on what kind of robber, no? like if it's a man or a woman. But they have a self, selfish mentality. So I can say that the, the robber, it's an encounter with the selfishness. You're going to understand this. Why? Why is this? What is the selfish, selfish philosophy? The selfish philosophy is. Everything is mine, and all that is yours is mine too. Even if it's necessary to use it first. This is the selfish mentality or the selfish philosophy. So if you look in the dictionary, if you start to study the word of philosophy or, or the selfish philosophy, right? It's everything is mine, and all that is yours is mine too. Even if it's necessary to use the force. It means that I'm going to dominate others if it's necessary. Even if it's causing pain, humiliation, damage. 
I want for me. Doesn't matter if I'm going to hurt people or not. I'm selfish and I want this for me. And this is what happened. When the man was walking, the robbers, they saw something in the man. They say, I want, I want what they have, I want for me. Doesn't matter if I'm going to beat him, what am I going to do it, but it's going to be mine. And the world, why I'm saying all these things? Because the world that we are living today, we are, we are facing, the, the world they are having encounters with this kind of people all the time. Yeah. All the time that we are, uh, the, the, the people in this world, they are facing this kind of people in, in their lives or, or their encounter with these people. And what are we doing? Or what we, uh, we are just nice or say okay everything is okay for me let, let me give you some examples in the world that we are living today there are some groups that is raising some groups that is trying to imposing what they want in, 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 for our lives for example if you go there like to Syria you know like a, a few years ago raised a group called ISIS so what, what they were doing, they are, this, they, are kind, they are the selfish group, or they are this group of the robbers that they don't care who they are facing in front of them. They say, everything that you have now, it's mine. If you don't believe in what we believe, we are going to kill you. What is this? This is a selfish mentality. This is a, hey, you need to do what I am asking for you to do. It's going to be my, my, my way now. It's going to be my will. It's not your will. It's a domination. As I say, it causes pain, damage, dominate others. We see hundreds, hundreds of people, even in our days, running from Syria, running from uh, uh, Iraq, trying to find a refuge in another place because these people, they're dominating them. We don't have an idea like... We don't know really like what it is to live in a place like that. But they are facing. The people in those nations, they are facing these robbers. They are facing this selfish group. I have so many stories that I heard, but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say maybe later on. But the another kind of group that is raised strongly, especially here in America now, or, or not in the United States, but in all America, uh, South, uh, Central America, North America, is the uh, socialism, communism, uh, and of course, then later it will become a dicta dictatorship, right? Dictatorship, thank you. So, but if you see these, their mentalities or, or their philosophy it like at the beginning say oh everything is okay it's gonna be good but no it's a domination they dominate they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they want to do and the, you'll need it to obey for example uh, uh, Venezuela how is Venezuela now how can, how can a rich country be in a mess like they were now because one man he stood there, he took control of the place and said, you know what? Now everybody's going to do what I'm going to say to do. They don't, they, they don't think in the people. They're not thinking in the, in, in, in the population, say, no, this is for the good of the people. They just give a speech that is nice for the people to hear. But actually, look how the people are living. I just, came in, I just came in from Cuba. So last week I was in Cuba. I'm going to share some stories that happened when I saw there in Cuba. But, and the, you see that this kind of uh, people, this kind of group, this kind of uh, robbers or selfish philosophy is trying to invade America. It's trying to invade the nation. It's trying to invade the United States. Can you believe that how... One person can say, no, no, let's bring this to here. Hey, pastor, you're, you're preaching politics. No, I'm not preaching politics. You understand what I'm saying in this message? If I go back to Cuba.
I have been in so many poor countries that it, like I say, oh, it's, I'm going to cry, it's going to be, no, 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 I have been through so many that it's difficult for me to say, oh, this is tough, or like, I know that it's tough, but I haven't seen so many, I don't know if you're understanding, but in Cuba, it was different, because it was not just the poverty, it's what the conditions, it's how, how the, 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 commun the communism, how the how they place it, like how they are going to live, like they don't have their will to live in the way that they want. For example, when, when the revolution came and they got to control, the speech was before, like everybody's going to be the same, everybody's going to be equal, everybody's going to be good, so everybody liked that, right? Say, oh, everybody's going to be equal, everybody's going to be uh, the same. But what happened when the, the revolution came? They say, your land is my land now. So they start to take control of our nation. So it was not about the people, it was about them. So they start to take all the lands and say, okay, this part of land, so you can have it all in this house now. Now everything belongs to the state, not belongs to you anymore. Let's do one thing now. Let's put, everybody's going to be equal. So the salary wage is going to be equal. Doesn't matter your profession. So in 2020, because I spoke with many people there, in 2020, the wage there, the salary there, is between $20 to $60 monthly. Not hourly, monthly. I spoke to several doctors. They receive $60 monthly. And they work like crazy. Can you believe me? To survive with the $60 monthly? But it's not only that. You say, okay, I have $60 monthly. The problem is, you don't have any merchandise in the supermarkets. You go to the supermarkets, you have nothing there. There, there, there are no detergents, no toothpaste. There are nothing. Nothing is there. So this is what, that's why I'm saying, like, it's not, it was different for me because I have been in, in poor countries. But it, it's difficult when you go to a place that even if you have money... You cannot buy anything. You know, uh, I met a man there. The last day, I was, I was in Havana, coming back to, to Houston. And I met a man, like in a, there, he was in a, in, a, in a house with the, the pastors that I was meeting with. And I was speaking, like, just trying to have some conversation with him. And he said, oh, uh, I live in Spain. My wife, my wife is in Spain, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, okay, good. But he's, he's Cuban. But he said that he was living in Spain. And said, oh, okay, you are here just for a few days. Ah, no, 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 I'm here. I'm going to be here for a little, a little longer, maybe one year. And this thing. so I saw that he, uh, he changed the, 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 the conversation and he left the room. And he never came back. Then the pastor that I was in his house, you know, he started to tell me the situation of his uncle. It was, uh, it was his uncle, no? And it says that uh, he was in jail. And the daddy days that he was in his house was just uh, four days that the, the, uh, they allowed them to go to their houses to be with their families and then go back to the jail. That's the why he could not go back to Spain and say, well, why he's in jail? Like, uh, what did he do? He says, 16 years ago, he bought cow meat for his daughter to eat. That's it? Yes. What did he do? I say, he, he bought cow meat for his daughter to eat. Understand this. Even if you have a cow there in Cuba, and if you kill a cow, three years of jail. And if the cow belongs to the government, to the state, and you kill the cow of the state, 30 years of jail. So nobody in Cuba is allowed to eat cow meat. So he didn't, he didn't kill 
He bought, the, he bought the meat for him to eat. And because of that, he's in jail. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the kind of the selfish group, the robbers that the people are facing all the time. And sometimes we are living a good life here and say everything is okay. But you know what? In the world, there are people that, there are people that are facing selfish groups that they are destroying them. And can you believe that there are people here, intelligent people here. Oh, maybe they say they're intelligent. Maybe I don't know. because, And they are going to Cuba to learn with them what they have to do to bring the same thing here. That is crazy. The church needed to wake up. We cannot allow this kind of thing is happening with us here, right? Let's, let's go forward. So the second encounter... They, like, remember, the man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he had an encounter with the robber. But then it says in the Bible, in the verse 31, a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Picture here something. The man is half dead, like he's trying to see what is happening. He was beaten up. The robbery really hurted him, damaged him. And now he sees a, a, a priest come with his garden, like his clothing, very nice. And he, he says, wow, the rescue just arrived me. But the Bible says that when the priest looked to him, he did nothing. The Bible says... That he passed by on other sides. Why did he do that? He was a priest. Why he could not help this man? I see two things or two points that maybe he said, well, I'm not going to help him because it's risky. If I go there to help him and maybe the, the robbers I still hear, the robbers, they're going to kill me too or they're going to beat me too or they're going to rob me too. So it's maybe better for me to go away. But the second point that I see here that maybe the priest really didn't want to help him, it's because it was inconvenient. And the second encounter that the people in the world are having is the encounter with the inconvenience. First with the selfish group, and now with the people that oh, the, the inconvenient group, like that is not convenient. Understand this, and now you're going to understand why I'm saying the encounter with the inconvenience. If the man were dead, whoever taught him, it was going to become impure or unclean. And will need to pass it for a ceremony of purification. And this ritual is very long and expensive. And besides, he was a priest. So it was going to be a shame for him to, to be like in impure, unclean. He said, I'm not going to be able to perform my duties as a priest. Because I I'm I'm need to be a, a, a part, right, to, to, for the ritual of uh, uh, cleaning. So I don't want to do this. Does not, it, this doesn't convey me. It's not convenient for me to help. I want you to pay attention in this. Because we don't do many things in life because say, it's not convenient for me. Why should I help these people? Why? Inconvenience means not convenient. Unfavorable aspect of something is not, not favorable. It's unfavorable. So why should I help? It's inopportune. So why? Why should I help? The people say, why? Why you travel? Why you travel, pastor? Why, why you spend so much money like you're trying to go to this place? Because as they say, like many of these expenses, I'm covering but right, of course, right now we are talking talk to the church, like uh, for the church start, also starts to help on this, no? But for years, years, my family, we are helping, we are spending money from our pocket, we are doing everything because we are not thinking that if it's convenient for us or not, we know that we need to help. But many people think so, why? Why should I go to India? Why should I go to Cuba? Why should I go to Venezuela? 
What am I going to gain with it? Do I, do I, am I going to have any return? They're going to help me something. They're going to give me something. So many times it's not convenient. So that's the why we don't help. If it's not convenient to me, I will not help. And this is what happened with the priest. So first the man had an encounter with the robber. Selfish. Second with the priest. That was the inconvenience. But now we see a third group that is arriving. Arising or arriving there. It says in the verse 32. So too a Levite. When he came into the place and saw him. Passed by on other sides. So now we say that there is another group or another encounter that this man that is on the floor there, he's, he's having. He's having an encounter with the Levites. Who are the Levites? The Levites are the chosen people to work in the temple. There was the priests that they are Levites too, but there was the, another kind of Levites that they were working in the temple. They were working different areas in the temple. They're working in the worship. They're working to carrying the ark. They're working uh, 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 to asse- assembly the, the the tabernacle in the temple. Then later in the temple to work in the temple for the sacrifice. Are you with me? So now these are the Levites. So the Levites arrive there and say, man, this man, he works. He's, I know that he goes there to the temple. So he worships there. So he, uh, he does something. He is going to help me. But the Bible says that he, he also passed by in the other side. Why? Now he had an encounter with the indifference. This man was, say, hmm. Indifferent means having no particular interest or sympathy. I'm indifferent. It doesn't care. You know, the inconvenience, it it does not convey me. Indifference means I don't care. Indifferent means a person that shows with its attitude, it doesn't really matter with others. A person who does not feel anything with the pain, tears, and suffering of others. It's a a person that is insensitive, apathetic. I don't really care. I don't really care what's happening in the world. I don't really have, I don't care what's happening in Cuba. I don't care what's happening in India. I don't care even what's happening around me. I don't care. Indifference. The world is having an encounter with this kind of people all the time. People around us, even here in the United States, even here in Houston, are having this encounter with this kind of people all the time. People that are selfish, that they're robbing, that they're destroying, they're, they're, they're damaging them. They're having an encounter with the people that say, you know what, it, it's inconvenient for me. You cannot be my friend. You cannot be around my group. It's, it's not convenient. Have an encounter with indifference. Like, hey, I don't care what's happening in your life. You take care of your life. I take care of my life. Doesn't care. Like, I, I, really, I don't care. I have some... I don't know how many years ago. In India, we received a girl a long time ago. Uh, I'll not say the story because it's really it's a long story. She was uh, raped. She was, uh, uh, she was, then later on they put a bomb for her to take care of one place. So with this bomb, she lost her army. Like it was, it was a really sad story. But uh, by the grace of the God, she's very good now. She's studying. She's, well, anyway. So, she stayed in Hope Home for several years. She was from Nepal. So, we took her from Nepal, brought her to India. So, she stayed in the, ho- in the Hope Home until she gets her age. So, she could go back to her place. You know, after the, these people, what did with her, they were destroyed there. But when she was there in India, you say, well, we need to do something for her. You know, being a girl in India, they, they do not look well. Right? They say, this is... The girls are rejected, so, and it's, 
now she doesn't have a part of her body. She doesn't have an arm. So we need to do something for her. So I met one guy in Tennessee several years ago. This guy, he had a, a factory of a prosthesis. Like very, very special, very nice prosthesis that they do for the people that they come back from the combat, from the, from, the, uh, from the war zone. So it was like very, very nice. So this guy said to me, you know what? I met the owner. And he said to me, you just bring the girl to the United States and we will do everything that we need to do. We will give the best prosthesis for her. Great. So we took her, we got to the visa, she came to the United States, she got her process, it was very well. Then from Tennessee, she came here to Houston, she stayed with us a few days. Then I received an invitation to go in another part of here in Texas. It was a small, uh, small city, and she was with me. So when I arrived in the church, I'm not joking, when the people saw her, they started to go away of her. I say, I cannot believe that I'm seeing this inside of a church. How can the people be so indifferent with the, what is happening in the life of others? They really did not, be, did not be, they didn't greet her, they didn't say hi to her, they, they look with a face that's like disgusting. And they didn't understand why they did that. She was dressing well. She's, I don't know, maybe just because they knew that she, what happened in her life. I don't know, but they were so indifferent. The people is suffering a lot. The people is going through a lot. And we are the one that needed to be compassionate, not indifferent. We cannot be uh, uh, have it is hard, like it, it does not uh, uh, inconvenience. It's, it's inconvenient to me. No. But the Bible also says that the, he, this man that he was on the floor, that he was beaten up, that he was bleeding there, he had a fourth encounter. In the verse 33, the Bible says that a Samaritan man was passing by. Was, it was not a priest, it was not a Levite, it was a Samaritan, a man that the people reject. The people say, these people, they are bad. But this Samaritan, it says here, in the verse 33, and I'm going to read a different version now. I'm going to read the Amplified Bible. So you just accompany me here. In the verse 33 says, but a Samaritan foreigner who was traveling came upon him. And when he saw him... He was deeply moved with the compassion for him and went to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he, he put him on his own pack animal and he brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out to denary or two days' weights. And gave them to the innkeeper and say, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I return. The fourth encounter. The encounter with the compassion. The compassionate. This man, he had no reason to help the, the, the guy that was on the floor. He had no reason. But the Bible says that he, something happened with him. It was an emotional reaction. Because it says that when he saw him, he was deeply moved with the compassion. He was moved. There was something inside of him. And the, this needed to start to happen in your emotions, in your, in your inner being. We are so, uh, so busy, worried about everything that is happening uh, uh, in our lives, in our busy lives, in our selfish lives, that uh, we don't feel more what the people is, is passing through around us. 
People are dying here around us in Houston and we don't care. We read in the news and we see robbery, we see people being killed, we see people being uh, 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 killing their life or uh, suiciding and the... We don't even care, but it's, it's time for us as a church to start to have this compassionate heart and start to feel what these people are suffering. I don't know if you know or not, but here in Houston, I heard that it's the, in Houston is the port of more human trafficking in all the United States. So uh, what, what are we doing? I'm praying, I'm praying, say, Lord, give you conditions, giving people, giving resources, human, and, the, and the, all the resources that we can that for us to help these people, to help these dr- drug addicts, these people that, the, uh, is the right word, drug addicts, or how, drug, drug addicts, yes, to help these people. We need to do something. It's not just in Cuba, it's not just in India, this is everywhere. But why we don't see? Why the, the people sometimes only see when they go to Cuba, when they go to India, to go to Venezuela? Why? Because it's too much poverty, too much really. That, but here the same thing is happening. People are hurting. And not only this kind of people, there are lots of people around us that they are hurting. They are suffering. And it's time for us to start to have this emotional reaction when we see them to start to be deeply moved with compassion. But it's not just the emotional reaction. We need to have the physical reaction. It says that he went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. So... He reacts. There was a physical reaction. He took care of him. He put the guy, this wounded guy, in his own animal. If you understand in the desert, you say, hey, I want you to be in the animal. I don't want you to be walking here. But there was a physical reaction. Say, I needed to walk. I needed to do something. I will not just say, whoa, I feel for you. Poor you. Wow, I didn't want you to happen in your life. No, no, no. Now I'm going to react. I'm going to do it. We will do it. We'll do something. We'll do something for the people in Cuba. Let's do something for the people in Cuba, church. Yes. We need to react. We need to do something for them. We cannot just hear what is happening and do nothing. We need to do th- do something so there was a physical reaction but there was also a financial reaction it says that the next day he took out two denarii denarii i don't know how you pronounce it right denarii and he gave them to the innkeeper and not only that he said you know what i'm already paying advance and if it's something also he needs when you give everything when they come back I will repay you. There is no way for you to say, well, I feel I'm helping here something, and you cannot, you can you do not put the money in your pocket. Money? No. Get out the money from your pocket or put your hands in your pockets or something like this, right? <laughs> there is no way. We need to have these kinds of reactions for us to make a difference in this world. And they know that restoring nations. It's going to make a difference in this world. Not to the, not to the world, not to the, the, the ch- restoring nations, but the people from restoring nations. We are different. We are the people that are compassionate. We are the people that we want to do something for them. We cannot just look at the world in the same way that we are looking. Stand up in our feet.